The events took place in the room. Nearby there was a clothes hanger and a painting. There was a noise. A little red-haired girl was sitting on the carpet. Apparently she hit her head. Having come to her senses a little, she thought about why she was here. She clearly remembered that she tried with all her might to save people in the storm. After that, she was carried away by the tsunami, and she slowly sank to the bottom of the oceans. It seemed to her that she was dead. At that moment, the girl approached the mirror. She looked carefully at her face. The reflection in the mirror surprised her very much. This face? And she slowly touched her face with her hands. Really? The girl began to touch her face from all sides with her hands. Apparently, what happened to her? Some strange changes have occurred. Why did she become so small in a second? The girl was currently four years old. Her name was Elaine. The girl was very pretty. She had red long hair and heavenly blue eyes. Ilan's life path was so thorny that when trying to find at least some positive moments, there is nothing left to do but sigh and shake his head. At the age of four, Elaine lost her parents. Her uncle took her in. And then a problem appeared. Elaine's uncle was the king of Aster. He was known for his bad and cruel temper. My uncle had his own daughter. He spoke to his dear daughter. She can play as much as her heart desires. The girl obediently hugged Mishka to herself and agreed with her dad's words. Elaine became a doll that the princess carried with her everywhere. She was like a teddy bear whose paw was torn off. Elaine sometimes hid from the princess. She climbed into the dark room and closed the door. She sat there so quietly that the princess could not find her. Well, the princess went around all the rooms in the hope of finding her doll. Does she really dare to hide from her? The terrible abuse ended when Elaine turned 20. Three disasters. Elaine almost outlived them. She was no longer a little girl, she was already a grown-up girl. And here she is standing in her room, she is now only four years old, and she returned to that hell that she would never want to return to. But why does fate do this to her? The room was all entangled in cobwebs, because no one lived here for a very long time. The girl decided that now she needs to get out of here. She opened her eyes wide and looked at her hands. These were small hands. The girl remembered that she is now only four years old. She didn't really know how to talk and had short legs. First, she needed to look around and think about who she could even undertake. The events took place in the kingdom of Ulster. Elaine began to walk down the corridor, but her steps were surprisingly small. Even a short walk was too tiring for her. As I expected, escaping from the kingdom with such a body is an impossible task, and she tried not to be able to do it. Has the corridor always been this long? Elaine really wanted to go back to the time when she was a mercenary after the death of Aster. But why was she returned specifically to her childhood years? Are there any tasks or tasks left unfulfilled? The girl stood around the corner of the house and carefully watched the carriage. The carriage approached the kingdom of Alistair. A blonde man came out and stood near the carriage waiting for someone. Elaine thought about it. She had already seen this carriage somewhere and once. The carriage was snow white. The roof seemed to be gilded. All decorative elements were also made of gold. The wheels were also golden. After looking and thinking for a while, the girl realized that it was an imperial carriage. The only reason that someone from the Empire could visit the Kingdom of Ulster. Is it really today? Are negotiations really going to start today? Not far from the carriage, two men and a maid were talking. What other negotiations could there be? There is no doubt that they came because of their heads. Is it really possible to negotiate something with the Imperial Jackal? What if someone hears her at that moment? The best option is to get back to doing your job. The Imperial Envoy is the foreign minister sent by the Empire to Benedict. He was called that for a reason. It was he who came to demand war reparations, and he extorted them like an animal jackal. Most likely, the reason why the famous Imperial Jackal came to the Aster Kingdom was because of those very reparations. Today, the Princess of the Aster Kingdom will become a hostage of the Empire as a guarantee of payment. Elaine thought about it. How can a princess become a hostage? Did she really just say hostage? Why shouldn't she become in debt instead of the princess? Before time turned back, King Asta once beat Elaine to a pulp. What if this time everything is different? Maybe this time she won't be able to survive after the beating. In her thoughts, she imagined crystal scales. On one side, there was a girl on the scales, and on the other, a large number of coins. The girl hit herself in the chest with her fist. She wanted to believe in herself more. And so she made her decision. A maximum plan was spinning in her head. She and only she will become a hostage to the Empire. And the girl proudly raised her fist to the sky. She was ready for this step. She wasn't afraid at all. But there was one problem, and you need to think carefully to correct it. Out of nerves, the girl began to make certain hand gestures. She began to mark time, stepping on one foot on the other. The girl was wearing an old shabby gray dress. Her hair was tousled. Look at her, no one will think that she is a princess. This needs to be fixed urgently. The Imperial Envoy was already walking along the corridor accompanied by another man. The Kingdom of Ulster was very beautiful. There were paintings hung on the walls. There were snow-white figurines. Everything seemed to sparkle with purity. Arnold, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Benedict Empire, 
walked along the corridor. The thought was spinning in his head how stupid this was. He asked what they would order to do. If they demonstrate in such a hidden form that the kingdom of Ulster does not eat money, it would be better if they ordered to hide all luxury items with a bow. Is he really wrong? The girl stood around the corner and listened carefully to their conversation. Arnold was thinking about completely devastating such a beautiful kingdom. The man was coming closer and closer to the place where Elaine was hiding. Even though it was an enemy state, Arnold was a little sorry. At this moment, Elaine ran around the corner and as if not seeing the man, ran into him. She hit Arnold's leg with her forehead. The girl yelped loudly. Elaine fell to the floor. She was in great pain from the collision. Tears appeared in my eyes, and stars were flying around my head. The blow was very strong for a four-year-old girl. The foreign minister was taken aback. He leaned over the girl and asked if she was okay. But the girl cried and said that her nose hurt very much. It was a big disaster and Arnold was upset. He would like to take care of her treatment. And the young man asked who the girl's father was. The girl looked carefully at the man. Does he want to know who her dad is? Elaine laughed cheerfully and said that her dad was the king here. And she quickly pointed her tiny finger at the image that was on one of the paintings. Arnold asked again, Is her father really the king of this country? It turns out that she is then the princess of this country. The girl nodded her head with a smile and said yes. I had absolutely no idea that I would encounter a hostage in this way. She said she was a princess. Well, something doesn't add up here. There is some inconsistency. And the minister narrowed her eyes and looked carefully at the girl. Elaine stood and looked at the man with an innocent look. She had very beautiful blue eyes. The girl stood and smiled sweetly. But she was in a simple, dirty dress. Arnold asked if the maids really didn't care about her appearance. If a man means her clothes, then she dressed like that on purpose. Arnold didn't understand what she meant. The girl said that she was hiding from the imperial jackal. She seemed not to know that this particular man was now standing in front of her. I was surprised. After all, his nickname is the imperial jackal. The man asked why she was hiding from him. Is she really playing hide and seek with him? Elaine said that her dad told her to do this because the imperial jackal is a bad person. He will beat their kingdom and take all the things for himself. Now everything became clear to Arnold. Elaine said that she would tell him something secret. The girl asked the man not to tell anyone about this. Today this jackal is going to take her with him to the empire. So she dressed in a shabby dress so as not to look like a princess. It was a well thought out plan. And Arnold already believed in it. Arnold's expression was confused. But girls were all that was needed. Everything was going great. Judging by the look on his face, he took her bait. Unaware of Elaine's intentions, the imperial jackal felt guilty. The king sat on the throne and waited for the minister of foreign affairs of the empire. Several guards stood nearby. The king was already worried why the minister was so late. Does he dare to ignore the Aster Kingdom because they are the losing side? Sitting on the throne was Baron Aster, the king of the Aster Kingdom. He was notified that the minister of foreign affairs had arrived. At this time, the door quickly opened and foreign minister Arnold stood on the threshold. The girl Elaine stood next to him. The king turned to the minister of foreign affairs of the empire and asked why he was so late. At that moment, the king drew attention to the girl standing next to him. Elaine had beautiful hair. She was wearing a princess dress. On the chest there was jewelry that only royalty wears. She had beautiful gold-plated shoes on her feet. The girl folded her arms across her chest and asked her dad if she really should go to the empire, in front of the girl's eyes. The girl wanted to continue living with her daddy. At that moment the girl began to cry and wipe her eyes with her pen. She turned to her father again. The king did not understand anything at first. He was dumbfounded. After all, this is his niece Elaine, but why is she wearing these clothes? The girl was wearing princess clothes. The foreign minister could not understand what the king's reaction was. And also the king's assistant stood and said why the girl was wearing a princess dress. This child is definitely... What about the clothes? The foreign minister said that the princess was wearing a dirty dress, and he asked the maid to change her clothes. Was there really any problem? The king looked at me in shock. Most likely he has already begun to guess about something. Wait, did he really just call her a princess? The king realized that the emperor's envoy thought that this child was a princess. In this case, this girl can be used as collateral instead of the princess. The girl looked pleadingly at the king. She was ready to disappear from his life forever, so she asked with her eyes to help him for the first and last time. The king said that nothing could be done since the foreign minister was the first to confront his daughter. The king didn't mind. He was ready that she would be taken with them to the empire as a hostage. The king nevertheless thought, and this parasite turned out to be useful. Everything turned out just fine for him. A nasty grin appeared on the king's face. Arnold wondered what his smile meant. He's up to something. Arnold was willing to talk more about war reparations, and the girl stood and looked at the king. Her eyes were full of tears. The girl was ready that the most influential person in the empire would quickly take her away from this hell. At that moment, 
pigeons were flying over the kingdom. They threw off their feathers, which slowly sank down. The events took place in the imperial palace of the Benedict Empire. The palace was very beautiful. It couldn't even compare in beauty to the king's palace. At that moment someone stepped on the man with his foot. The other man shouted that he should never dare to bother him on this issue again. So the emperor sat on the throne. It was as if several men were lying at his feet. This was the emperor of the empire Benedict Douglas Benedict. He was waiting for the hostage of the Aster Kingdom to finally arrive. He really wanted to see this girl. White doves were flying in the sky. These were free birds that could fly where they pleased. At that moment, a carriage with a hostage was driving towards the emperor's palace. Foreign Minister Arnold was sitting in the carriage, and a little girl was sitting opposite him. This girl was four years old, and now she is a hostage of the empire. Suddenly Arnold said that they had arrived. The girl looked out the window in surprise. Before her was the Benedict Empire. The girl was stunned. She came closer to the bottom and grabbed it and pressed her palms against the window. How big it was and how huge this empire was. The girl had never seen such luxury before. And now she will have to live here. The girl saw the Benedict Empire with her own eyes for the first time. At the entrance to the empire there was a guard in iron armor. He had a spear in his hands. And on his belt hung a saber. Everything was great. The girl has almost come to terms with the idea that she will now be a hostage. And today her life as a hostage begins. The carriage drove closer and closer to the empire. On the territory of the empire there were luxurious flower beds, fountains and various figurines. There were many beautiful paths and lanterns. Everything was clean, neat and expensive. In front of her was the Benedict Imperial Palace. Elaine had never seen such beauty before. And now the girl and Arnold got out of the carriage and walked along the corridor. The man asked that the girl was probably tired. But before she can go and rest, she needs to greet his imperial majesty. Elaine was ready to meet the emperor. She agreed. Finally, today she will have a personal meeting with Emperor Benedict, whom she has only heard about. And these were mostly rumors. At all costs, you need to please him. Emperor Benedict was rumored to be a cold-blooded man, who was ready to cut off people's heads just because someone picked a flower in the imperial garden. The princess of the Aster Kingdom, who was a hostage, was expelled from the empire after six years because she fell out of favor with the emperor. And now they have already approached the imperial office. The foreign minister said that behind this door is the emperor. The girl stood and just blinked her eyes. She was both scared and curious. How her life as a hostage will proceed is entirely up to him. Everything depends on this person who sits behind this door. Elaine had never seen him in person. But she was different from the stupid princess. The door opened and the girl entered. She will please the emperor at all costs and will be able to survive the walls of the imperial palace. And now they were already standing with the Minister of Foreign Affairs in front of the Emperor. He introduced himself and bowed. And the girl stood there and didn't know what to do now. Arnold said that he returned to the Empire with Princess Aster. The Emperor sat on the throne and just narrowed his eyes. He had a very beautiful robe. Everything was gilded and glowing with stones. At first glance, the Emperor was not so scary. He looked at the girl with an appraising glance. And he asked whether the Minister of Foreign Affairs really wanted to say that this child was the blood and flesh of King Aster. It was so small that it seemed completely invisible to the eye. The girl was surprised. Is it really for the eyes? It is important for her not to pay attention to the words, just to laugh. And she giggled cheerfully. The girl grabbed her dress tightly with her hands. You need to use this opportunity to imprint your image in the memory of the emperor. I may not get this chance again. Praise, it always works. She should compliment him. The girl smiled and said that the uncle was very handsome. The foreign minister was shocked. The emperor himself was no less shocked. She called him uncle. The emperor sat and looked attentively at the girl. He tapped his fingers on the armrest and was silent. Elaine didn't understand what kind of atmosphere it was. Did she really make a mistake at that moment? It seemed like overkill. But there is no way out. You need to accept the situation as it is. The emperor said that this was the best option for him. Mr. Foreign Affairs did not understand what he meant. Apparently no one understood what the emperor meant. The emperor spoke of war reparations. At this moment, the emperor and the girl looked carefully into each other's eyes. The emperor heard that the ruler of Aster was begging for a reduction in the amount of war reparations in exchange for his daughter being sent to the empire as a hostage. Suddenly the emperor said to bring Elaine back. The girl was shocked. The emperor asked to collect another 10% of the total amount from them. Not 5 but as much as 10%. The emperor said that this was quite enough if they were going to stop any attempts to retaliate by the kingdom. She said he couldn't trust someone who negotiated using his own child. The girl was surprised. What is this sympathy? Is the emperor really capable of this? The Minister of Foreign Affairs addressed His Majesty. He appealed to his reason. After all, because of the issue of tax rates, a war with the Aster Kingdom may break out again. Everything was right. This would be quite enough reason for the King to launch military operations. If war breaks out, her position as a hostage will become even more precarious. 
In this case, it would be a good idea to enlist someone's support within the Aster Kingdom. Someone's support. There will be such a person in different kingdoms. The girl was only four years old, but she thought like a completely adult. And she remembered. Exactly, there is such a person in the kingdom. But should she share the secrets of the Aster Kingdom? But one day she almost died by the grace of King Asta. Therefore you should not feel sorry for him. Now she must survive at all costs, even at the cost of revealing all the kingdom's secrets. And the girl grabbed the minister's sleeve. She said something about Grandpa. The foreign minister listened carefully to the girl and asked what she said. The princess said that Grandfather Moby said that war is very bad. Yes, this is Grandpa Moby. He is a very good grandfather and has a long mustache. He hates wars because he believes that they require a lot of expenses, so he does not like his dad, who constantly gets into military conflicts. Suddenly Arnold understood. She is talking about the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Aster, Moby Grant. The girl's face became cheerful. That's exactly what she wanted to say. This could be the person you can reach out to for support. The Emperor asked the Princess, Maybe she knows something else and this is an influential person. Everything went great. If Elaine continues in the same spirit, she will be able to interest the Emperor. The girl may remember something or maybe not. She thought about it. Suddenly she said she remembered something. Grandpa Moby is actually bald and the gorgeous hair on his head is a wig. And she laughed merrily. Flowers seemed to be flying around the girl. She was very cheerful and happy. The emperor said that everything was clear. He did not expect anything more from the child. Even though she is a princess, she is still a child. What could she possibly know? But the girl's eyes widened in surprise again. Most likely she remembered something again. And she said that if she removed the book with flowers from the shelf in her grandfather's house, then a secret door will open, leading to a room with books where there are many numbers. The first thing in the kingdom is a hiding place, which few people know. The child said that there are few numbers in the book. Does she really mean secret accounting? Wow, the secret accounting of the prime minister of an entire kingdom. And this is already extremely valuable information for the emperor. And the girl continued to act happy and smiled. Of course, this information was very valuable. All the vulnerabilities of the aristocracy of the Aster Kingdom. If you get hold of the account books, then any need to seek support within the Aster Kingdom will simply disappear. Because with their help, they can safely use the noble families of the country as their puppets. At this moment, the emperor turned to Arnold. He asked the princess to take a room more suitable for her status. The minister of foreign affairs said that everything would be done as the emperor said. He will prepare a room for the princess in the annex. But the emperor was against this. He said to allocate the best room for her in the main palace. The girls again felt that something was wrong with the atmosphere again. They are so shocked that she is sent to the main palace. And so they allocated a room for her. There was a luxurious bed here. There was a lot of space. Most likely this was the best room in the kingdom. The girl walked in and simply couldn't believe her eyes. Everything around sparkled and glittered. It was an incredible room. Elaine was speechless for a moment. There were delicious cakes on the table and delicious looking tea. She never even dreamed of this. Has she really found herself in a fairy tale? The girl came and sat on the sofa. She silently looked at everything around her. It was completely different from the room I lived in the Aster Kingdom. At this time, someone turned to the girl. She opened her eyes wide and looked around. Two maids approached her. Their names were Bella and Casey. Today they will serve her. She immediately turned to the princess. Thank you, she may need something. The girl said that she was very tired, and he really wants to sleep. Another maid offered to sing her a lullaby. The girl refused. She pushed the maid away and said that she wanted to be alone. She falls asleep beautifully in a calm state and does not require any lullabies. The maid asked if the princess would like a teddy bear to be brought to her. Elaine said she didn't need anything. They take their work too seriously. When the maids walked out the door, the girl breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, she can be completely alone. She is so used to loneliness that she feels uncomfortable in the company of maids. And the girl walked around the room. Today has been a tough day. She needs a little rest, and she fell onto a large and luxurious bed. Suddenly she jumped up. One very important thought was spinning in her head. What should she do if there are no account books in the cache? Most likely she will face some kind of punishment. If she had not returned to the past, the location of this cache would have become known only ten years later. In other words, now that same Moby Grante may well store those records somewhere else. And if suddenly her assumptions are confirmed, the Emperor will not give her life. Perhaps she will still be expelled much earlier. She needed to think of something. But for some reason no thoughts came into her head. She probably just needs to rest now. She really, really wanted to sleep. That's because she's just a little child. And he thinks so much and also about such adult things. If when she wakes up she discovers that everything has gone wrong, she will need to escape from here. After these thoughts, the girl turned on her side and fell fast asleep. You could hear the girl snoring. Suddenly someone woke up the girl and told her to get up. It was Bella's maid. The girl slowly opened one of her eyes and looked. The maid announced that his majesty was calling her. 
She must come to his office immediately. At first the girl did not understand what they wanted from her while she was awake. Is the uncle really calling her to his place? The girl looked out the window but it was night there. Why at such a late hour for no apparent reason does he call her to him? Why does he need this? What's happened? Were her fears confirmed? Is it really how she thought everything turned out? Pieces of paper with numbers seem to fly before my eyes. Has the location of the accounting records really changed? The emperor stood near the window and looked into the night. Also standing next to him were his various advisors, who were also awake at such a late hour. Moonlight fell through the window. The emperor stood near the window and peered into the darkness. His hands were behind his back. Suddenly someone knocked on the door. The voice addressed his majesty. The emperor turned his head to the side. The minister of foreign affairs stood in front of him. He said that he had brought the princess of the Aster Kingdom. A little girl stood next to him and looked attentively at the emperor. The emperor asked the princess to come to him. The girl's face was surprised. She slowly and with steps began to approach the emperor. Now she was already very close to him. She came up and stopped. She looked into the eyes of the emperors with her blue eyes. The emperor stood and looked at the girl carefully. Her hands were folded together. Suddenly the emperor extended his hand. All the fears she had experienced all her life flashed in the girl's memory. The evil smile of a king who laughs. And fear is fear again. He completely took possession of the girl. The emperor said that she is the blood and flesh of the Aster Kingdom. He gently placed his hand on the girl's head and sat down on his knee. And a lot of thoughts arose in the girl's head. For the first time she was not hit as she had been before. He looked into her eyes carefully and said that this was a great job. He thanked the girl for her cooperation. The events took place in the main palace of the Benedict Empire. Namely, this was Elaine's room, the maid Alice said, so that his majesty would just look at all these gifts. She was shocked. The girl was sitting in her room and there were a lot of different boxes around. The maid didn't know when she would open them all and see her surprises. After everything she said about Moby Grante, her role in the empire has changed a lot. The emperor simply showered her with gifts. She opened them one by one. From being a useless hostage from the Aster Kingdom, she became the emperor's favorite. Everyone adored the girl. The princess was so cute. The servants were simply in awe. She became the most popular person in the empire. She sat on her throne and fanned herself. Gifts rained down on her from all sides. And they asked her to tell me, maybe she still knows something about Aster. And when she won the favor of all these people, she needed to look at the place in which she would live. The girl quickly ran up to the maid, the one who took out the box. The maid looked at the girl in surprise. She asked what her majesty needed. Elaine wanted to take a walk outside. The girl asked if she would go for a walk with her. The maid shuddered. Did the girl just call her Miss Alice? Elaine asked if perhaps she shouldn't call her that. The maid said that of course she could call her that, and she would be ready to take a walk with her with pleasure. At night the garden looked completely different. The moon was bright and brilliant. Night butterflies were flying. It was charming here. At that moment they saw the emperor here. His stripes fluttered in the wind. I also most likely didn't sleep that night. If you go to bed late then there is a high probability that the princess will remain so small. The maid said that they needed to return home immediately. The emperor sat in the gazebo and drank aromatic coffee. The minister of foreign affairs stood next to him. Everyone was surprised to see Princess Eilis here in the garden at night. The princess gallantly bowed to his highness. Who would have thought that it would start on him at such a late hour? The emperor's eyes were very surprised. He also didn't expect to see a girl here. The girl shrank a little. He wasn't going to talk to her now. She should quickly greet him and leave. The emperor said they could go. He loudly placed the mug on the saucer. Elaine felt relieved. We need to hurry up and get out of here quickly. But this order applied to everyone except Princess Aster. The princess shuddered at that moment. At this moment, the maid and the foreign minister quickly left. The girl watched them carefully. She would like to shout to the maid to wait for her. She did not want to be left alone with the emperor. She wanted Alice to come back and take her with them. But the order of the emperor was law for them. She mentally asked not to leave her alone with the emperor. Well, there was nothing to do. She stayed in the gazebo with the emperor. There was an emotional distance between them. At this moment, the emperor extended his hand and asked her to come over. The girl was very worried. What does he need? Why does he make her worry? And the girl slowly began to move towards him. The girl looked at the emperor with surprised eyes. He won't beat her. At this time, he quickly picked her up. The girl hung in his arms. Her feet left the ground and were just dangling in the air. After that, he sat her on his lap. The emperor continued to look calmly at the girl. And the girl at that moment was in shock. What did he just do? Did he really put her on his lap? It was so unexpected. Right here. The emperor looked carefully at the girl's eyes. He was silent. The girl laughed. Who cares what he did? She just needs to smile. At this time, the emperor took a liver from the table. The girl looked straight into his eyes with her blue eyes. What will he do now? He slowly lowered his hand. He put Pirojenko in the girl's hand. The emperor said something he gave her called macaroon. French macaroons based on meringue. Made from egg white, 
caster sugar, granulated sugar, almond flour, and food coloring. The emperor asked the girl to try these cookies. It's very tasty. The girl looked at the cake in surprise. It was in the shape of a bunny, and it was called macaroni. It was Elaine's first time seeing such a dessert. Still, it will be good if she eats it. But the girl began to think that the cookies might be poisoned. But she quickly drove these thoughts away from herself. She opened her mouth and brought the cake to her mouth. But how good an emperor can be? She quickly took a bite of the cake. The taste was simply magical. The cake was very difficult to chew, but it was very soft and sweet at the same time. The girl didn't understand how cakes could be so delicious. It was great. Elaine enjoyed every bite. She liked the cake. She chewed thoroughly. My cheeks puffed out at the same time. And the emperor looked at Princess Elaine in surprise. Suddenly Elaine stopped. She stopped chewing and looked carefully at the emperor. The man looked at the girl in surprise and asked if the cake was delicious. Elaine suddenly blushed. She didn't expect the emperor to be watching her. At this moment, the emperor laughed. At first, Elaine didn't understand whether she really ate so funny. But if you think about it, is it bad that he laughs? In the end, her main goal is to gain his favor. The emperor extended his hand to the girl. He quickly wiped away the remaining cream on her cheek. He looked attentively at the girl, and the girl looked at him. Suddenly, the emperor asked if she missed her father. He ran his hand through the girl's hair. For her to do. If you knew that her layout would not be native to her. This was an unexpected question for the girl. What does he want to hear from her? She closed her eyes tightly and clenched her fists. If she found out that her father is not her own, the girl didn't even know what she had done. She really wanted to say that her real father died when she was still very young. She couldn't even remember his face. She was ashamed to even think about her parents. After all, they didn't spend much time together. Why does he ask such a question? Did he really find out? And the girl quickly swallowed her saliva. And the emperor continued to carefully watch the girl. He seemed to feel that the girl was deceiving him. Otherwise, he has no reason to ask such a question. Maybe he's checking on her now. The girl grabbed her dress with her hands. She needed to think carefully before giving her answer. She needs to be careful with her answer. If her father weren't really her father, she would most likely be sad. The emperor agreed. Naturally, she would be sad. Elaine clenched her fists. Why does he ask such a question? The girl didn't understand whether her father was not her real dad, and she looked carefully into the eyes of the emperor. The emperor thought for a while. He didn't know what to say to him now. Why is she asking him about this? There was a full moon in the sky. There was a whistling sound outside and the leaves were quietly falling slowly. The emperor continued to look carefully at the girl in green. And the girl looked with her surprised eyes at the emperor. What is he doing? Is he really testing her? What to answer her? The girl just swallowed her saliva. She would like to answer something. The emperor suddenly said that it was already late. And a little girl like her should be asleep already. The emperor decided to take the girl to the room himself. The emperor walked along the path and clicked his shoes. A girl walked next to him and stamped her little feet. She also had beautiful shoes, but the steps were much shorter. Therefore, the emperor walked first and the girl followed behind him. The girl already seemed to be chasing him. She was already very tired and puffing. Why does he walk so fast? Doesn't he even want to try to keep up with her? The girl was already noticeably behind the emperor, and she decided to run after him to catch up. Well, as soon as the girl accelerated, she tripped over a stone. She got very scared and started to lose her balance. She started to fall. And then she fell. The girl closed her eyes at that moment. But it was just a simple fall. She thought she would just crash into the ground. The girl opened one eye. It didn't even hurt her. When the girl opened her eyes, you saw that she was holding the emperor's leg. And most likely she just crashed into him head on. The girl was shaking all over with fright. What will happen now? The emperor looked at her and simply asked what she was saying. The girl clutched his trouser leg tightly in her hands and hesitated again. I realize that Mr. Benedict is very cruel. And the girl buried herself in his knee. She asked if he would definitely get rid of her. He will throw it away as soon as it ceases to be useful to him. Elaine well didn't understand what she was saying. The emperor looked at her carefully. Why does she think that? The girl hesitated. That's because he... Well, what should I say to her at this moment? No thoughts came into her head. And the emperor looked at her carefully. And the girl said because he asks strange questions. Like what she will do if her father is not her own. She needs to answer at this moment so as not to anger the emperor. The emperor looked at the girl angrily. Elaine. The events took place in the room. It was already dawn and the room was flooded with sunlight. There were all kinds of desserts on the table as well as tea. The main attribute of the table was a large cake on a stand. Elaine pricked the strawberry on her fork and was ready to pop it into her mouth. Well, the strawberry has already disappeared in the girl's mouth. She really loved these desserts. And now she could feast on them as much as she wanted. She was glad that she survived. The emperor said that he was not trying to scare her at all. He just has that look. He also didn't understand why he was telling this to the child. To Elaine, the emperor did not seem as cruel as rumors circulate about him. She didn't even know what to think about it. In any case, why did he suddenly ask her about her father? 
It was strange no matter how you looked at it. The girl sat and was completely immersed in her thoughts. Suddenly a maid turned to her. She asked the girl she wasn't going today. The girl looked at the maid in surprise. She really was going to eat everyone up. The maid said that if you eat so many sweets, you might get tooth decay. She can also get juvenile diabetes. Elaine was surprised to hear about diabetes. Suddenly another maid approached the girls. She asked Alice not to tell Her Majesty such difficult words. Standing in front of them was the red-haired maid, Bailey. She had green eyes. She crutched and looked at Her Majesty with a smile. Alice asked, Doesn't the girl understand such words? Or she said that of course she didn't understand, and she was ready to demonstrate it. Therefore I asked Alice to watch carefully. Elaine actually understood what Alyssa was saying because she is an adult inside. But she pretended not to. At this moment, the forces were closer to the girl and turned to her to Her Majesty. She asked if the girl knew what happens to the body if you eat too many sweets. She just laughed merrily. But the girl didn't seem to know the answer to this question. The cavity monster will appear and turn her teeth black, and she asked if Her Majesty was against it. The maid did it so scary that the girl got scared. She just sat there in shock. The maid scared her. Well, I asked her not to be afraid. She said that she would protect her and washed her teeth thoroughly. When the cavity monster doesn't come to her, Alice stood and looked at Bailey in surprise. Why did she scare the girl so much? She asked that such stories were enough. And Alice hit the maid Bela on the head. The girl laughed and said okay. Alice had very strong hands. An argument began between the maids. When he asked me if Alice was jealous, another said she was just tired of listening to her pretend to be a child. Bailey just wanted to try and talk to the princess on her level. The girl realized that it would be sweet enough for today. After all, this can cause health problems. And she and the maids continued to argue with each other. The girl had never felt such warmth in her life while she lived in the kingdom. Is it normal for someone like her to want such happiness? At this time, the doors opened with a roar. Several pairs of boots walked through these doors. They stomped loudly on the parquet floor. They stood in the market looking in surprise at those who entered the room. The princess was also very surprised and looked with wide open eyes. The men said that they would accompany Princess Aster. Well, the maids began to protest, and they asked to wait and give them the opportunity to completely figure it out. What do they mean? Where do they want to take her? On what basis? The maids didn't hear anything about this to me. The men said that this was an order from the emperor himself. One of the maids was shocked. Will the emperor really send her to the Holy Empire? The girl wondered why on earth he would do this. Why did he suddenly decide to do this? There are only two reasons why the king will take her to the Holy Empire. The first is to revise a third of the conditions of her hostage, and the second is to bring her to justice. It became very scary. In the event it was the end for her. How did this happen and what to do now? The events took place in the Holy Empire. One of the men was walking along the corridor and the girl was following him from behind. In the end she was brought here. She was sent to the Holy Empire. The Holy Empire is a temporary ally of the Benedict Empire. The Holy Emperor rules the state as pontiff and as emperor, and its military power levels with the Benedict Empire. The man said they should come in. They are waiting inside. But the girl was in no mood. Why did the emperor bring her here? The doors slowly opened, and the man told the girl to go ahead. The girl closed her eyes and whispered that this might not be what she was thinking about. The room contained the emperor, as well as a gray-haired man. He asked if this was the child the emperor had told him about. She came up and looked at the gray-haired man with her blue eyes. At that moment the man looked at her. The emperor, seeing the look, said, She may be young, but she's still a lady, and looking at her like that is rude. The man asked for forgiveness. He saw her for the first time, so he wanted to take a good look at her. Well, it didn't matter. Does she feel? The emperor said that of course she felt great. The man said that everything is clear. His son doesn't listen to him. Maybe because he's the youngest. The girl heard. Maybe it's because his father is too protective of him. The girl then remembered that the emperor's eldest son died long ago, and she also heard that he only had the youngest son left. Everyone said that his father cared about him very much, and it seemed true. Isn't the emperor's youngest son about her age? Father and son continued to talk about something. Well, at that moment the girl thought. She didn't feel the tension in the air. Was she mistaken in her conclusions? If only that were the case, it would be great. At that moment someone burst through the doors. He asked for forgiveness for being late. There was another young man standing. Elaine was simply dumbfounded. She heard a familiar voice. The man said that it was his first time driving this way, so the trip took a long time. The girl's eyes became frightened. The man asked, they haven't started yet. The guy said that he had finally arrived and we could start. The man who just walked through the door was King Baron Aster. The girl looked around and looked in surprise at the man coming closer. She was simply stunned when she saw him. She would never have thought that he would walk into this room at this moment. The emperor said whether he had the nerve to be late, and this is very arrogant of him. The king just laughed. He and the emperor looked into each other's eyes. After that he said that he might be late, 
but he was in a hurry as best he could to see his daughter. He bowed gently and grabbed the girl by the shoulders. The girl shuddered. The emperor carefully observed the girl's behavior. The gray-haired man turned to Baron Aster. He deceived not only the Benedict Empire, but also the Holy Empire. He lied about the child being his daughter, and even the entire empire was involved in this matter. The man's voice was stern. He glared at Baron Aster. The girl was amazed. How did they manage to find out? But the Baron didn't seem to understand what was going on. He repeated once again that this girl was his daughter. The Emperor said that this was all just his excuse. They did some research and got the following results. They looked at Aster's family tree and found out something strange. If everything he said is true, the name Elaine should be on his side. So why is it written under your brother's name? The girl was dumbfounded. Has the truth been revealed? The Baron said that this tree means nothing. He raised Elaine as his own daughter, she was like his own. Unfortunately for King Aster, everyone knew that he didn't even add her name to the royal family tree. In other words, his claim is therefore unfounded. They were ready to send Elaine back to Asta's kingdom and send his real daughter to the Benedict Empire as a hostage. Do they really want to send her back to this hellish place? The girl's eyes were frightened. Does she really have to go through all this again? Why does she need this? She will have to go through all the terrible things that happened to her before she returned in time. And she remembered how her father beat her how they poured a bowl of soup on her head, how sarcastically everyone laughed around. It's like a bolt from the blue. The girl's whole body trembled. She grabbed her skirt but continued to tremble. Her legs began to tremble with fear. The girl could not contain herself. The emperor looked carefully at the girl and saw what was happening to her. Suddenly he realized that this child now had no parents, and even if something happens, there is no one to look after her. The girl stood stunned. The emperor's father did not understand what he was getting at, and he looked at his son in surprise. The emperor said then there would be no problem if he adopted her himself. The faces of those present were surprised. The baron was stunned. The emperor's father was also very surprised. And the girl was horrified. Is it really possible that the word adopt has just been heard? Does the emperor really want to become her father? They say that they want to take in a child from an enemy nation from the imperial family. But you can't do that. They tried to convince his majesty. They had nothing to oppose if King Aster refused. Everything was like that. The emperor could not adopt King Asta's daughter against his will. If the public finds out about such an immoral act, the emperor may lose their favor. The emperor's reputation will also undoubtedly decline. The emperor sighed. He didn't know this. In any case, there is no other way out and he hugged the girl tightly. He said that they should watch what they say in front of this child. If of course their lives are valuable to them. Everyone saw that her majesty was sitting in the arms of the emperor. They didn't know what we had here. They asked forgiveness for their rudeness. And this child is not King Asta's biological daughter. However, he pretended that she was her and sent her as a hostage to the Empire. These disgraceful scoundrels. How dare they deceive their great emperor. But the emperor said that he had already thought of everything and there was no need to worry about it. At this moment the girl shuddered. She sat in her father's arms. And I wondered what the emperor was thinking about now. Why did he even adopt her? The princess doesn't seem to be in a good mood after being adopted by his majesty. The maid asked if Alice didn't agree with her. Alice told White to watch what she said. After all, their little girl is now the princess of the empire. The pain did not subside. Why does her real father and this emperor look similar? Alice again asked Belly to watch her tongue. After all, they are brothers. Naturally, they will be similar. And therefore, their daughters can also be similar to each other. The princess believed that King Aster was her father. The maid thought that the girl was now in great shock. But the girl was sitting in her room on the bed. Her head was full of thoughts. She looked in the mirror and thought, she never thought that she would become a princess of the empire. How did this happen? But she was sure that she would be much better in this house. She closed her eyes and tried to find at least some answers to the questions. She remembered only the last words of the emperor. You girl didn't worry about it at all. He has a good plan. Did the emperor really have a plan? Maybe her adoption is also one of the points of the plan. She also couldn't understand what he had in mind. No one in this world ever does good for nothing. She was allowed to remain quietly in the castle while she gave the emperor prices for information. Why did he drag away a useless hostage like her? What else could she offer him? The girl was sitting on the bed and I don't know. Many questions remained unanswered. If she can't prove her worth to him now then. And the girl heard someone rustling at the door. Someone was talking but the conversation could not be heard. Suddenly the door clicked and someone told the girl that he was coming in. The emperor stood on the threshold in a shirt and with the other he was holding some kind of box. He quickly entered the room and approached the girl. The girl turned and looked at the emperor with a questioning look. He handed her this box and asked her to take it. The girl took the box in her hands and thanked him. The box said Elaine Benedict. The girl looked in surprise and did not understand what it was. She brought this box to her place and looked at it without taking her eyes off the emperor. Suddenly she turned to the emperor, Mr. Benedict. She asked now whether she really could live here with him. He won't send her anywhere else.
the emperor asked. She prefers to live in that small kingdom rather than in a spacious palace. And also, he will be better at taking care of children than King Aster. The emperor promised the girl to treat her like a princess. Now he will be her father. The emperor called the girl his daughter. The emperor said that from now on she needs to try and call him dad. The girl, swearing with her voice, said the word dad. The operator was unhappy. It was very strange. She calmly called father. Suddenly the girl shouted loudly to her dad. The emperor said excellent, and she asked her to address him that way now. After this the emperor said that it was time for him to go. He quickly turned away and walked away. Near the door the emperor turned and said that they were still seeing each other and called the girl her daughter. At this time the door slammed loudly, and retreating footsteps were heard. The girl was simply shocked. Her new name is Elaine Benedict, and this name was written on the box. The girl wondered what could be inside. When she opened the box it was filled with macarons. There was a note inside. It said it was a gift for his new daughter. The girl sighed. She was very pleased to receive such a gift from her new dad. She was so touched, tears appeared in her eyes. She was so stunned that she just burst into tears. With one hand, she wiped away her crystal tears, which ran one after another. And with the other, she was holding a box of cakes. The events took place in the Imperial Palace. This was the Imperial Garden. The girl stomped along the path. Several days have passed since she officially became the Princess of the Empire. She thought at first they would spread gossip, but they were quieter than she expected. In fact, the servants all stood at ease. They addressed her to Her Majesty. They were interested in whether she liked the boots that the Minister of Intelligence gave her in honor of joining the Imperial family. And the girl happily stomped along the path, dressed in a very beautiful dress and new shoes. She said that she liked everything, happily. One of the maids took pictures of her endlessly. I tried to capture every step. The girl came up and looked carefully at this black thing that she was holding in her hand. She asked what this black thing was. Is this really some kind of artifact? And the maid kept running around. She asked the lady to look and smile. Another maid suggested that Her Majesty walk to the lake. It sounded like a lot of fun, and they all went to the lake together. The lake had clear blue water. Water lilies were floating and colorful fish could also be seen at the bottom. The water was so clear that you could see clearly. The girl leaned over and looked carefully at the fish. The maid said that the fish were quite beautiful. These carps are a legacy of the empire. They have lived here since its very foundation. The maid pointed to one large fish. She said that it was the oldest. Elaine said if the fish is the oldest, then in all likelihood it is the grandfather. The maid asked if the girl wanted to feed them. The princess didn't mind at all and quickly extended her little hands. She gave the girl a piece of bread. The princess sat and generously scattered food into the lake. Little fish swam up, and the girl looked at them and was fascinated. The fish were very beautiful, and the water is so clean that the girl saw her reflection in it. The maids also watched the girl carefully. One of them even managed to photograph her constantly. Suddenly one of the maids quickly ran from the place. She asked to show her the image of Her Majesty. The other maid doesn't need this at all. After all, Alice was the one who put these lovely shoes on her feet. I was just ready to share, but with one condition. After all, it took her a lot of effort to bring this device to save memory. It seems she forgot after all, she is the Count's precious daughter. Money is not a problem for her at all. And the princess at that moment was looking at the water and wondering why the water sparkles so much. It was very strange for her to realize that this light warmed her heart. It was so lovely. The girl has never been so happy. Suddenly the princess thought that she could reach it with her hand, and she quickly extended her hand. She stretched and stretched with her little hand. To be closer, she had to lean a little over the lake. Suddenly the girl fell into the water. Sprays flew over the lake. The girl fell into the water. They stood watching this carefully. They were dumbfounded. The maids were scared. They called the girl, but she was not visible. They stood at three and watched her. How could they have missed this? Suddenly they began to run to the place where the girl fell into the water but the girl just gurgled into the water and sank to the bottom like a stone. No matter how hard the maids tried and shouted, the girl did not hear them. She slowly sank to the bottom. For some reason, the girl's head was down. The girl lowered herself and thought, how can a child have such a heavy head? At this moment, the girl was thinking that she should not have reached out to this light, and she did the wrong thing. She doesn't even know how to swim. Before he returns home, suddenly the girl saw the light again. She reached out to this light with her little hands. He was very warm. Suddenly something began to hiss and gurgle. It was as if something had crashed into the water. The girl looked with surprised eyes. She saw some kind of glow from above. Someone said to her, The child is my child. It was some kind of rainbow stone. The girl wondered if the stones were already talking to her. But she can't do it anymore and she quickly closed her eyes. The girl didn't understand that she was sleeping at that moment. Her whole life flashes before her eyes. These were memories from her past life in the kingdom of Aster. Despite the bullying, she managed to survive. Then the kingdom was destroyed by a sudden catastrophe. The girl escaped in the midst of this chaos. 
She was wearing only a light raincoat and a backpack on her back. Even after this, her life did not become easier. To survive in this heartless world, she had to rely only on herself. She hoped that this time life would turn out differently. The girl couldn't believe that she would die so stupidly. Suddenly, she heard someone calling her. A splash was heard. Someone called her name. The girl felt as if something was dripping on her. The emperor's face was dripping and wet. He carried the girl in his arms, and water dripped from his hair onto the princess. She opened her eyes and sighed. The image before her eyes was blurry. She felt very warm hands supporting her. She was saved by the emperor, that is, her father. It's time to go back. The girl lay in bed and slept soundly all the time. Her eyes were closed. Suddenly the girl blinked. Various people stood around her and her new father was also present. The emperor asked why she did not wake up. The emperor was very angry. They said soon, they say. So I asked them to immediately make her open her eyes. If they don't do this, he will cut off their useless heads. The men were shocked. They explained that they were doing everything possible. The girl realized that she had missed the moment to wake up. The emperor was indignant. He asked if this was all they were capable of. The men started shouting that they could do better. The emperor really didn't think so. He wanted to see the result here and now. After this, the emperor drew his sword from its scabbard. He said there was no point in trying, and he was ready to deal with them right away. The princess realized that if everything went at this rate, many heads would roll. And suddenly the girl shouted, Dad. The emperor froze with a sword in his hands. A small hand grabbed the emperor's uniform. It was his Elaine. She woke up. The girl looked with wide open eyes at her dad. The emperor took her by the hand. He said that dad was nearby. He also asked how she was feeling. The girl said she was fine. The emperor asked why she suddenly reached out to the lake. Why did she do this? About how it all happened. The girl said that she saw something beautiful sparkling in the water. The emperor asked another question. It was something like a gem. The girl said no, it was just light. He was so beautiful that she tried to grab him. Her head became heavy and she fell into the water. The girl apologized to her father. The emperor thought for a moment. Father understood everything. Well, in any case, this did not relieve responsibility from the servants who were near the lake at that moment. First of all, the emperor decided that the maid and servants would be executed. After all, they were next to the empress, made such a mistake, and could not resist it. There was a girl. What did the father just say? The gardener and the emperor continued his story. The gardener and the knight in charge of this lake will also be executed. After all, they just stood and watched his daughter drown. It was unforgivable. The girls felt sorry for the servants and everyone present. She said it was her fault. And if she doesn't do anything now, they will simply be executed. Elaine wondered what to do. She couldn't let everyone die because of her. It would be wrong. The girl quickly jumped out of bed and called her father. The father looked carefully at his daughter. The daughter of rage screamed. If he dares to harm them, she won't want to see him again. At this moment, the emperor stood up silently. He looked carefully at his daughter. And the girl looked carefully at her father. She didn't think it would work. But seeing that her father listened to her, she decided to continue. The girl told her father that this was the first time she had asked him for anything. The emperor shuddered. His daughter not only asked for a favor, she also told him please. The emperor looked carefully at the servants. Everyone present stood there seriously frightened. The emperor said okay, but this is the first and last time. Everyone was very grateful to the girls. The five servants already thought that they would all die. They considered the girl the best. After this, the father spoke that he has one condition. It was a clear sunny day. The events took place in the imperial palace, namely in the park near the lake. A gurgling sound was heard near the lake. There was a command for everyone to get ready and swim freestyle. We also had to get to the starting line. Knights took part in the swim. They were in all their metal attire. They were ordered to train on the lake every morning in full armor so that they could move freely even in the water. It was unbearably difficult. This was the emperor's condition in order to save everyone's life. The girl was sitting on a chair and shaking her legs. Her feet were shod with intricate shoes. Someone asked if she liked her new shoes. The Minister of Intelligence turned them into an artifact especially for her. They will help her in any dangerous situation. The girl opened her mouth in surprise. Are her shoes really an artifact? The maid said that in case of danger, a protective bubble would appear around her, with which you can breathe underwater for a minute. They also built an alarm signal, and while she was wearing them, her location could be tracked. The girl didn't want to let the water fall anymore. Why make an artifact out of a shoe? It's very expensive. This was not the case. Even His Majesty himself approved of these shoes, His Majesty. That is, her new father approved of them. The maid said it wasn't just the shoes that he approved of. All the nobles sent her many gifts, wishing her a speedy recovery. But only gifts approved by His Majesty were accepted. Come to think of it, this table had all the desserts she liked. There was also a box of pasta on the table. The emperor was more sensitive than she expected. The emperor also saved her from the water. He seemed to care about her. That's because he is now her father. 
The maid said that she had something for Her Majesty. The girl was surprised whether there was a gift for her. The maid said that on the day she fell into the water, it was found in her pocket. The maid kept it so that she could return it when she recovered, and she handed the gemstone into the girl's hands. It was a transparent stone. Why was it in her pocket? It immediately gave me a sense of watery coolness. The girl took it in her hands and immediately felt freshness. But the girl had already seen him before. She saw him when she sank to the bottom. This stone even spoke to her. Underwater he appeared to her to be a rainbow, and now it was completely transparent. It looked a lot like a soul stone. With its help the spirit was summoned. Did she really use the soul stone? And did she really summon the spirit at that moment? It is normal for a four-year-old to have such abilities. She was holding a stone in her hands. One of the maids asked Alice to help her clean up. It was probably impossible, because in the past, she was a mercenary who specialized in spirits, and to be precise, it's specifically about water spirits. No matter how ironic it may sound, then she could drown. There was only one way to find out if she had summoned a spirit, and the girl roughly inhaled and exhaled. She pressed the stone to herself with force. She closed her eyes and began to crush it in her hand. She should try it. She squeezed the stone tightly, raised her hand up and said, Undine, she calls her. Well, at that moment, nothing supernatural happened. At that second, a black crow flew into the room and began circling towards the girl and croaking. The maids looked at each other. They were surprised. They asked her what she said. Another maid started taking pictures of her as the princess was waving her fist very cutely. The girl thought why she couldn't summon the spirit. And at that moment, Whitewash took a photograph of her. About. She signed this frame. Her Majesty waves her hand. The events took place in the Emperor's palace. Someone sat and scribbled with a pen. Someone was drawing some kind of pictogram. It was Elaine sitting and drawing something. She drew a spiritual circle. The elves taught her about this. The girl was sure that this time it would work. She drew this circle in secret because she was afraid of being caught. I drew it while hiding under the blanket. The girl knew that even though she was young, her body was susceptible to spirits, so it could work. Suddenly, the spiritual circle began to spin and glow green. There was a noise and water splashed. The girl opened her eyes wide and carefully watched what was happening. A funnel of energy appeared at the top of it. A glow was also visible. Some kind of water bubble appeared. She had cute eyes, cheeks, and mouth. The girl recognized it as Undine. The droplet played and twirled merrily. The girl simply watched her with emotion. Suddenly she breathed a sigh of relief. Elaine jumped up and down cheerfully. She was happy that she managed to summon the Undine. It was good that she called Undine. And then she should only become stronger. And she continued to chew the transparent stone in her hand. Now she knew about all the catastrophes of the future. And to survive them, she has no choice but to become cooler. She also didn't know when the Emperor would stop caring about her. It was as if the image in front of my face had ceased. His face was covered in scratches. After all, the human heart can change at any moment. Therefore, she could only trust her own strength. The droplet bowed cheerfully. And the girl asked the Undine to become stronger together. Since she has already been given a second chance, she will try her best. The events took place somewhere in the palace. Someone sat behind the waist and said that it was a child. Her name is Elaine. A lady was sitting at the table. The woman said that the girl had been in the palace for a long time, but she had not heard anything about her. The servant asked if she should bring it and provide it to her. But the woman said there was no need for that. The woman turned her head. She should go and check on her herself. This is her dear granddaughter. The girl was playing on the edge of the forest, which was simply filled with different flowers. The maids were surprised. Did Highness really do this just for them? They were very happy. The girl said yes. She made these flower rings especially for them, and she handed the rings to the maids. A woven wreath also hung on the girl's hand. The maids were happy. Her highness made them for them herself. One of the maids was ready to die of happiness. The third maid was upset that the rings were made from fresh flowers, and they would soon wither. Alternatively, you could dry the ring and also use it as a bookmark. The princess said everything was fine. It takes about a month for them to go bad. The girl said that these were unusual flower rings. They won't know anything because they can't see spirits but she made them with the help of the Undine. They were endowed with the power of the water spirit, so they will remain fresh for a very long time. Alice put the ring on her finger and was enchanted. She asked for whom the princess made the wine that hangs on her hand. The girl looked carefully at the wreath and said that she made it for her dad. The princess asked whether her dad would like him or not. The maid was sure that his majesty would be simply amazed to see the wreath. At the word dad, the girls were very embarrassed to call him that. She hoped that dad would like her wreath. At that moment, Elaine was so excited about her gift that she couldn't even think about the difficulties that awaited her. She enjoyed the beautiful flowers. She smiled sweetly and was happy. She sat at the table and looked at the food. There was only bread with sauce, meat, fish, and much more. The girl, accustomed to seeing a lot of sweets, was a little shocked. But she didn't understand what was happening here today. Why on earth is there some woman sitting here holding a glass of wine? The woman looked at the girl with a stern look, and she asked her if something was wrong. 
The woman asked why the princess didn't even touch the food. The princess wondered if she was dining with the Empress Dowager. She sat next to me and asked if the girl really didn't eat that, or tell her to prepare something else for her. The girl said that everything was fine and she liked everything. She was very hungry, and the bun looked very tasty, and the princess quickly began to eat it. She didn't take her eyes off this woman. It turns out that this woman is her new grandmother. The woman looked exactly like the emperor. They were very similar to their son. In any case, why did her new grandmother want to have dinner with the girl? Was the woman really interested in what kind of girl the emperor adopted? The woman asked what happened to her hand, and she quickly grabbed the girl's hand, who at that moment took another bun. In her other hand, the girl was holding a piece of meat. The girl's arm was very skinny. The hands were very thin and fragile, just like twigs. The girl would understand if she spoke like that about her from the past. Well, how can she call her current body thin? The girl considered herself to be honest overweight. The empress asked the princess to try this and handed her a tray of steak. After that, she pushed a baguette with impregnation towards her and said that it was also very tasty. There were still tomatoes, pears, and lemons on the table. Grandmother asked for everything that was on the table. Grandma said that Ellen will now have dinner with her. The girl was stunned. Is her grandmother really going to fatten her up? For the next week, the girl ate only in the presence of her new grandmother. She was always surprised by the portions she had to eat. Grandma heard that she likes sweets, and the girl imagined herself to be just a chubby little thing. She tried to eat everything that her grandmother offered her so as not to upset her. This girl came to her room and couldn't come to her senses. It was very difficult for her after such a dense and satisfying dinner. The maid brought some medicine to the girl. Gone too far. The maid promised that these medicines would help the food digest. The girl thanked the maid. This was exactly what she needed. The maid asked if the princess was probably uncomfortable being around the current empress. The girl said that there was a little bit. The maid said, although it doesn't seem so at first glance, Her Majesty is very kind-hearted. Therefore, the princess need not worry about her. The girl was surprised. Is the empress really kind-hearted? And everything was exactly. Come to think of it, when the girl choked on her candy, the empress was the first to knock on her back. The next day she even visited her, and she brought a bar of chocolate. The empress said that she would definitely not choke on this. You looked at the empress with eyes full of surprise. She brought and gave her a chocolate bar, which the girl definitely wouldn't choke on. Well, at this rate, the princess might just die from a stomach rupture. And the girl gulped down the medicine that the maid brought her. In that case, she would have no choice but to use it. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door. The empress was irritated. She asked the girl why she was there. I asked my mother what was wrong. Can he really accompany her? Temperature held the girl in his arms and pressed her tightly to him. She said that he usually eats in his room. The emperor did not understand. Is it so strange for a father to eat at the same table with his daughter? It was probably a little late, but he still wanted to fulfill his parental duty. The empress stood her ground. She told the emperor to forgive him, but there was no chair for him here, so he should retreat for today. The emperor looked carefully at his mother's eyes and said that then he could just do this, and he pulled the back of one of the chairs to sit down. The emperor said that his child would sit on his lap and eat. The girl felt happy. The emperor stared at his mother. The girl, hugging the emperor, also looked carefully at her grandmother. The grandmother sat and glared at the emperor. The girl didn't understand. Why is there such a hostile atmosphere between mother and son? It wasn't what she had hoped for. Why was this room so uneasy? Lightning bolts from the eyes of the emperor and empress each other. It seems the girl had no other choice. She quickly glanced at the table. It was a little early, but it was time to put her plan into action. There was a grilled steak on the table. There were sliced tomatoes and mushrooms all around. The meat was also seasoned with rosemary and cranberries. All this was presented on a beautiful gilded plate. Elaine quickly stabbed a piece of steak onto her fork and turned to her dad. She held out her little hand with the food and asked dad to say, ah, she wanted to feed him. At the same time, the girl smiled cheerfully. The emperor was a little stunned. For the first time in his life, someone wants to feed him. While the emperor gathered his thoughts, the girl asked to hurry up because her hand would soon fall off. And the emperor uttered the sound a. At the same time, he opened his mouth wide. The steak disappeared into dad's mouth. The girl sat in her arms and laughed merrily. She was very pleased that dad was listening to her. The father chewed his food diligently, and the girl was happy, and her plan was a success. The more food she feeds him, the less she will have to eat. The emperor said that he had a very good daughter. He did not expect anything else from his daughter. When he looked at the girl, he immediately realized that they were close. He just needed to adopt her. At this moment, the emperor looked proudly into his mother's eyes. The mother did not argue. She folded her arms across her chest. The princess asked dad if he was okay, and having received an approving answer, she quickly reached for the fruit. But at that moment, the girl stopped. Is it right that she does this? After thinking a little, she decided that there was no difference. And you have to try everything. At that moment, she took a cherry tomato from the plate. Now the girl turned to her majesty and said to say ah too. To say that the empress was surprised is an understatement. 
She was simply speechless. The girl held the tomato and thought, what if grandma thinks she has no manners? She was still a little uncomfortable with the Empress Dowager. Will she let herself be fed? After all, the Empress looked a little stern and at the same time surprised. The Empress frowned and said to wait. At this moment, the girl shuddered. She looked questioningly at her grandmother. Grandmother said there was no need to address her so formally. She can just call her grandma. Elaine was surprised, and she stuttered out the word grandmother. It was very difficult for her to pronounce these words. After all, she had never said them before. Grandma said everything was right. She is now a grandmother to her, and she happily ate the tomato from the girl's hands. Grandmother quickly experienced the fruit and said that it was very tasty, and it could all be because it was her beloved granddaughter who fed her. And the girl continued to look at the empress in surprise. At some point she thought that Alice was right. She shouldn't be afraid of Grandma. After all, she is a very kind and fair person. The stubborn empress just wanted to get to know her better, and she couldn't express her feelings correctly. It was the same with Dad. It took me a while to understand him. They were united not only by their appearance. At that moment the grandmother asked for another piece of lamb. Elaine was surprised but obediently agreed. After that, the grandmother asked her to serve steak. Dad asked for roast duck and also feed him soup. The girl's eyes went round. She simply did not have time to feed her dad and grandmother. The princess asked to wait. It was too much. She didn't expect this. What should she do now? The emperor smiled, and the grandmother also laughed quietly. They almost unanimously said that enough was enough, and now the girls should eat themselves. The emperor had never been so happy. Elaine had never seen her grandmother so happy. The princess was shocked. She figured out so clearly what she needed to do now. It turns out they were just teasing her. The girl thought that they were adults here, but they behaved completely like children. The events took place in the library in the Benedict Palace. The library was spacious and big. The princess sat in the library and quickly wrote her name with a pen. This is her new name that her dad gave her. Grandmother nodded her head in approval. If a girl knows how to write her name, then her grandmother should teach her how to write other words. The princess knew how to write other words, but she wanted her grandmother to teach her this. And grandma quickly wrote a few words on a piece of paper. She asked the girl to repeat it, and she will say what it means only after she writes. The princess agreed and quickly began to write. The princess sat and quickly wrote on a piece of paper. She very diligently wrote out each letter. This activity was very exciting. The girl thought for a second and looked somewhere up. She realized that, having been distracted by her task, she had completely failed to notice where her grandmother had gone. The girl looked around and her grandmother was nowhere to be found. After that, the girl saw her grandmother standing near the window. It was sunset through the window. The sun was slowly setting below the horizon. And the grandmother peered and seemed upset about something. The girl watched her grandmother carefully. Her grandmother looked very lonely and upset. She had very sad eyes. With the naked eye, one could understand that it was very difficult for her. Something is bothering her. After this, the grandmother breathed a sigh of relief. The princess thought that something most likely happened to her grandmother, and something was wrong. At that moment, the girl asked, I'm okay with my grandmother. She feels good. Grandma apologized. She just remembered the old days. Grandmother said that she once taught three princes to write, just like he's teaching another princess right now. The girl was surprised. Did grandma really teach three princes? She quickly jumped out of her chair. Did my grandmother really have three princes? That's right, the princess completely forgot that. At that moment, she shuddered. The first prince is the ruler of the underworld, Oracle Benedict. The second prince is Swordmaster Lainey's Benedict. The third prince is the master of the Tower of Blue Magic, Arneel Benedict. The emperor had three sons. Now they are also children. The first principal is ten years old. The second prince is seven years old. The third principal is also seven years old. At this moment, the grandmother gently stroked the girl's head. She said she doubted she'd get the chance to meet her new brothers. It was a great pity, but she is unlikely to see them anytime soon. The princess's brothers study hard. Elaine was sure that in their eyes she was just a random girl who came out of nowhere and joined their family. Perhaps it's for the best that she hasn't met them yet. The events took place in the Imperial Palace. The girl hoped that she would not meet at least until she strengthened her position in the castle. Several days passed and the Imperial carriage drove up to the house. Four harnessed horses clattered their hooves loudly. A boy of about seven was riding in the carriage. He had red hair and green eyes. Next to his feet stood a sword sheathed. Someone told the boy that they had finally arrived in the capital and the boy looked out the carriage window with his green eyes. This boy was Prince Lena's. A few days before the arrival of the prince, the imperial palace. The princess was in her room. She was lying on the bed and thinking about something. Something was bothering her very much. She decided it was time for her to think about money. Where can she get them or how can she earn them? Now it seems that she is in the favor of the emperor and the empress dowager. Well, what could happen in the future? Therefore, she needs to do it in advance. In case the princess overheard the maids talking, 
One heard that Her Majesty throws away gold from time to time. The other maid also heard it. She even saw it herself while she was cleaning her room. The lady wraps it in her letters. The girl began to listen to the conversation and jumped out of bed. She's just throwing away the gold. The girl couldn't believe it. How rich is the Empress? And she imagined her grandmother, who was simply throwing away handfuls of gold bars. It was a little strange, but it was an impressive sight. The girl decided that she needed to see her grandmother right now, but she can't show up to her without a reason. She needs to come up with some kind of excuse at all costs. And the girl looked at the nightstand. There were a lot of all kinds of cookies on it. The event took place in the Empress's office. She was sitting at the table and writing something with her pen. She wrote something, texted, and stopped. As the Empress Dowager, she could not behave like this. And Grandma sighed. She let go of her head and was upset about something. Apparently she was writing some kind of letter, but she shouldn't send it. Elaine watched the Empress quietly. The girl looked carefully at her grandmother. The maids were definitely talking about these letters, which the Empress is now writing. Well, the girl couldn't see from the door what was in these letters. She needed to get a little closer. As soon as the girl wanted to come closer, she caught her foot on the doorframe. Grandma heard a certain knock. At that moment, the princess simply flew into her grandmother's office. She fell on the floor right in front of the table. Grandmother shuddered in surprise. At that moment, the girl's grandmother ran up. She asked if she was okay. Was she hurt? And at that moment, the girl was lying on the floor and crying. Somehow she managed to say that she felt fine. Her body was awkward. There were all kinds of cookies on the tray. It came with rainbow sprinkles, chocolate, and sugar. Grandma was surprised whether the princess had brought all these cookies especially for her. I said that everything was right. She brought them to her beloved grandmother. After all, these cookies are very tasty, and the girls would be very pleased to eat them together with their granny. It was very nice of you. The empress was simply dumbfounded. She touched her lips with her hand. The empress jumped up and said that she could not sit still when her granddaughter brought her cookies, and she clenched her fist. The grandmother was thinking about something like this to treat her granddaughter to. Grandma decided to go for tea, which would be best suited. The princess decided that any tea would suit her. The empress was leaving, and the thought of what tea to choose was spinning in her head. After all, the choice of tea in the imperial palace was huge. The princess was left alone in the room. Maybe it was for the better. We need to check whether it really throws out gold. The maid was told that she wrapped it in letters before throwing it away, and the girl looked carefully at the sheets of paper lying on the table. She got up from her chair and quietly tiptoed to her grandmother's table. The girl looked at the table and wondered where the gold was. There were no sands of gold on the table, but that's exactly how the girl imagined them. The princess opened her mouth in surprise. She needed to think a little. She saw a pen and gold ink on the table. The girl realized that these were not gold bars. It was just a letter written in gold ink, and she looked carefully at what her grandmother had recently written. Well, after all, gold ink is also gold. I thought about it. She quickly ran her eyes over the letter. The letter was addressed to Laney's. She wrote that she misses him very much, and she really misses him. The princess realized that this letter was addressed to her grandson. But why doesn't she send it, but throws it away? And the girl realized that when her grandmother looked out the window, she missed her grandchildren all the time. But her status as Empress Dowager prevents her from complaining. That's why she keeps everything to herself and doesn't tell anyone about it. And if there are already rumors that she is throwing away gold, it looks like she hasn't been able to send these letters for a long time. The princess understood her, but she didn't want to see her grandmother so upset and sad. Elaine quickly picked up the pen. She dipped it in ink and began to write. If a grandmother wants to see her grandson so badly, then she simply must make this desire come true. The princess's hand trembled. The handwriting was not as beautiful as my grandmother's. Well, no matter what, the princess had to make it in time and do it. And the girl quickly finished writing the letter. She wrote that if the boy was not busy, why not come back to the palace? Suddenly, something dripped onto the letter. The princess decided that this way no one would know that someone else wrote the letter. A drop dripped from the girl's nose. She sniffed quickly and wiped her nose with her hand. The princess did not know which prince she should send this letter to. After thinking a little, she decided that she would send it to the one who seemed the most normal. And then in the imperial palace, they announced that the second prince had arrived. The servants had to get ready and greet his majesty as quickly as possible. Didn't his majesty train chivalry in the Bolong house? The maids did not understand why he returned so suddenly. Maybe he had problems with the duke. Or maybe he got into a fight with the guard captain. At that moment, the doors opened with a roar. A boy stood on the threshold. The maids were simply stunned to see him so quickly. The first question was where his grandmother was. The maid was surprised that the boy asked the grandmother first. Why doesn't he ask about the emperor? And the boy quickly began to run around the house. Maybe she is in her chambers, or in the garden. Suddenly, like a grandmother, she shouted to him, and he looked carefully in the direction where this cry was coming from. Grandma was stunned. She ran down the corridor and shouted why he had come to the palace without informing him in advance. 
Did something really happen to him? The maid tried to tell the grandmother that she had forgotten her shoes, but she ran and did not pay attention to it. The boy was no less surprised than his grandmother. He also quickly ran towards her. They ran up and hugged each other. The prince said he also missed his grandmother very much. The boy said if his grandmother wants to see him, she just needs to give it to her, and he will quickly get ready and come to visit her in a short time. The boy also asked how her health was. Grandmother did not understand what he meant. Dam looked at her grandmother in surprise, and the grandmother looked in surprise at her grandson. The boy took a letter out of his pocket. He said it was strange. Wasn't she the one who sent this letter in winter? And Grandma quickly took the letter in her hands. She opened it and began to reread it. Grandmother's eyes were surprised. It was as if she had seen this letter for the first time. She did not understand how it could fall into the hands of the prince. The grandmother asked the boy what it was. Yes, she wrote letters to her grandchildren. The letter contained the following, that the grandmother really misses her grandson. She really misses him. If he is not busy, why not come back to the palace? He feels very lonely without him. And also a signature that sincerely his grandmother. Grandma didn't understand how Lainey's received this letter. She only wanted to send it but never did. And also she didn't understand why half of the letter was written in some kind of crooked handwriting. Grandma closed her eyes for a second. Could this really be Elaine? Was it really she who finished writing this letter? Grandma remembered the smiling girl who came with a tray of cookies. She was in her office that day. I could easily write it. But this is impossible. The girl had just started learning writing so she couldn't finish it for her. But anyway, Grandma wondered if it could have been one of the servants. At that moment, someone's hand touched my grandmother. It was Grandma's grandson. He asked Grandma if something was wrong. After all, she looked very puzzled. The boy guessed. He knew it. She did not send this letter, and the boy was very upset about it. The grandmother looked carefully into the eyes of her grandson, but it was unclear who did it. But she smiled sweetly at the boy. She told Lainey's it was her. Granny laughed cheerfully. She realized that her grandson would definitely be upset if he found out that it was someone else who sent this letter. Thanks to this letter, my grandmother was able to take the most difficult step. Grandmother and grandson were walking around the palace. For such a long time apart, they had a lot to talk about. I wanted to spend time with each other. They talked about all sorts of topics. Looking at the grandmother and grandson, one could safely say that they were happy. At this moment, the princess stood behind the column and carefully watched what was happening. She even started sniffling. She had a handkerchief in her pocket with which she could wipe her nose. This sight was very touching. The princess was doubly pleased because it was she who initiated their meeting. If Elaine had not sent this letter, grandmother would not have decided to take this step for a long time. Elaine examined the boy carefully. Is this boy really the second prince? She knew that this particular prince would become a great swordsman and it was very interesting. That's why he's already so trained. But suddenly the girl thought, was it a good idea to call him back to the palace? She sent him a letter because he seemed the kindest of the three princes. But there were also bad rumors about this boy. The princess heard that he was addicted to battle, challenging every strong opponent in his path. And if he was dissatisfied with the fight, then he beat him half to death. This is princess horror. There was a rumor that you shouldn't even look into his green eyes. Will he really try to beat her too? But this cannot be because she is only four years old. The prince glanced and looked at the girl. He is still young. Perhaps his character has not deteriorated. The boy looked carefully at the princess with his green eyes. And the girl stood scared and also looked at him with her blue eyes. At that moment, the girl jumped and disappeared behind a column. She wanted to hide from him as quickly as possible. The prince stood and looked carefully at where the stranger had just been. At this moment, the grandmother asked the boy, Has something really happened? There's something there. The boy laughed and turned away cheerfully. He said that there was nothing there and he was just staring. And the prince was with his grandmother. Elaine stood behind the column and didn't look out anymore. She stood quietly so that no one would hear that she was there. The princess wondered if the boy had already left. She was sure that he did not see her. The girl was shaking all over with fear. Her face was worried. She assured herself that she was safe. But unpleasant thoughts arose in the girl's head. The prince turned to her and called her a little one. And also the fact that he challenges her to a duel. He stood in front of the princess and challenged her to a duel. This was business as usual for the prince. And the princess was, one might say, very surprised. She didn't understand who he was talking to. The girl asked if he was challenging her to a duel. She said that he was calling her. The prince came closer to the princess. It's beautiful where she came from in this palace. And how his workaholic father allowed her to sit on his lap. The princess was stunned. The boy said that there is no need to pretend. After all, he heard the rumors that were circulating. Even he had never sat on his father's lap. Elaine was stunned. Does he really want to go out with her? Does he really want to fight for such a trivial reason? Maybe it's not so banal, but it's certainly not serious. The prince said that the princess is not as simple as she seems, but he was not ready to lose to her. 
He was ready to be generous and let her choose the method of the duel. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a fair fight. Elaine was stunned. Did he really challenge a four-year-old girl to a duel? It looks ridiculous. But that's how it is. The second prince is exactly what everyone says he is. Princess Elaine decided that he would not let her go so easily. She has no choice but to accept the challenge. And the girl agreed. The princess was ready to come up with her first activity. The princess decided to play and see who could eat the most pasta. The prince was surprised. What is macaron? And how they eat it? The princess thought that if this is a sweet eating competition, she will never lose. Two birds with one stone will eat macaron and put the prince in his place. The boy thought, although he doesn't know what macaron is, but he will never lose. Everything was great, and the challenge was accepted. This is how the duel between Elaine and the second prince began, with their pride at stake. The first round has begun. Elaine Benedict or Laney's Benedict. The judge was a maid. And so the competition began. Elaine quickly opened her mouth and began to chew. Following her, the prince began to chew. Laney's threw the pasta into his mouth and began chewing. Well, what a taste it was. It didn't look like meat. It was something sweet and sticky. And basically he realized that he couldn't handle more than one thing. While the princess was grabbing the pasta one by one, she quickly devoured the desserts and there were fewer and fewer of them on her plate. The prince was surprised. And so the maid said that it looks like the winner has already been determined. HRH Princess Elaine supports the victory. The girl continued to chew the pasta and smiled cheerfully. Everything was great. That's enough of this competition. But suddenly the prince spoke, that he challenges the girl to a second duel. Elaine was surprised. Will there really be a second duel? But the next one will be a sword duel. The princess did not expect such a duel. After all, she couldn't fight with swords at all. She made a surprised face. What did he just say? She would now have to fight the future swordmaster. The kingdom was already dawning. The sun was high above the horizon. In the room where the duel was to take place, there were spears, axes, and much more here. In principle, he warned that the winner would be a true swordmaster. He certainly considered himself the best at wielding a sword. A girl can show it too. Elaine saw that the prince was very stubborn, and she had absolutely no fencing talent. Elaine thought for a moment. What should she do? She had absolutely no desire to fight the future swordmaster. At this time, the prince swung his sword. He asked the girl to see what a beautiful sword he had. The sword was really beautiful. Long arrow, which shone like a mirror. The girl just gasped in surprise. In this case, she has no other choice. And the princess came up with an idea to compliment him. She said her little brother was right up there with the cream of the crop. He is very cool and brave, except how to shower him with compliments. There is no child in the world who does not like praise. The prince was surprised. And what does this mean from the cream of society? The princess said that this means he is the best. The prince said that the girl could not have told him this. After all, he is very cool. The princess said that her brother was just like the prince from a fairy tale. The prince wondered whether his sister really thought that way about him. Although he considered her a little thing, she had a good eye. And the girl immediately introduced the demon king. He was very scary and ferocious. Elaine that her brother is just like a warrior who will defeat the evil demon king. And she said again that he was very cool. Apparently the girl went a little overboard with the praise. Basically he asked her to stop and not embarrass him. But the princess could not resist. He almost gave in to her flattery. While we were talking to history, the men discussed this conversation. Isn't the second prince here for training? And in front of him is her highness. He's not making fun of people at the bottom. But everyone thought the brother and sister were having a great time. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. After all, the men really thought that they would fight. And if her highness gets hurt, their heads will simply fly off their shoulders. The prince listened to the men's conversation. Although they spoke to her in a whisper, the boy still caught some fragments of phrases. After that, he asked if his sister wanted to see what he was capable of. The girls were very interested to see how well he handled the ball. In that case, and the boy pointed his finger at one of the men. He told him that he was calling him to the bedroom. The man was dumbfounded. He asked again if the boy really meant him. The prince said that his sister wanted to see what he could do. That's how this sudden duel began. And the princess in this case was no longer as a participant in the duel, but as a spectator. He was excellent with a sword. At the same time, the man was directly trembling. He couldn't really fight with his majesty. Princess Elaine announced the start. Attention, let's begin. The man and boy began to swing their swords. I heard the sound of their swords. They fought bravely with each other, no one inferior to anyone. The prince was sure that he would definitely win. He looked at the enemy with his green eyes. He advanced and retreated, shuffling along the floor. The princess couldn't believe it. Her brother was on par with the knight. He really was very tonally talented. And in general, he was a much better opponent. If they were different in age, he would have easily defeated him. They swung swords at the enemy. All that was heard was the ringing of swords. But suddenly one of the opponent's sword fell to the floor. Nothing fell out of the knight's hands. Here the prince looked confidently into the eyes of his opponent, and the girl quickly clapped her hands and said that the second prince was winning. 
it was a real and honest victory. The prince was pleased with himself. He smiled contentedly. The prince waved his knife again and asked the girl if she liked his sword skills. The girl jumped and clapped her hands. She once again called her brother cool. She said it was just great. He's just great with a sword. At first, she was simply flattered by him, but in reality, she was simply impressed by him. The prince knew that his skills were simply excellent. Should I show him something even cooler? Elaine wondered who could be cooler. Dam said he could count to 1,000. This is how many approaches he does during his training. Someone asked whether the stubborn empress really invited the second prince. Why did she even do this? One of the men was sure that she knew that he had not yet completed his nightly training. The conversation was conducted by the Ballon vassals. Of course, this was a political move from the Empress Dowager. Maybe their guess was correct. Count Bile was asked and demanded an explanation. House Balland is famous for its knights, but they are also part of the family of the Dowager Empress. But the Empress Dowager recalled the second prince without warning. This is definitely her warning to them. She most likely says that she no longer needs a home. Was the Empress really going to abandon their family? But that was ridiculous. Why would she do something like that? This is what they have to find out. The princess overheard the conversation and was stunned. What are they even talking about? What kind of nonsense are they talking about? The girl overheard them while playing hide and seek with the second prince. It turns out that by her actions she can frame the empress, and they won't call an urgent meeting because of this. At this time, the second prince hid behind a pillar. He counted slowly but counted to 1,000. The events took place in the emperor's house. An urgent meeting was called regarding the actions of the current empress. There were many people present at the meeting. Count Bile asked a question. Why did His Majesty do this? Why did he bring Her Highness but such an important meeting? The princess sat in the Emperor's arms and listened attentively to the conversation. But isn't this a meeting about the Emperor's family? This means his daughter also has the right to be here. He said that this had nothing to do with the girl. He could not. The princess couldn't believe they actually did it. Why do her bad predictions always come true? The Count asked when the main person would arrive. At this time, the door to the office opened and the second prince stood on the threshold. His gaze was fierce. In my opinion, he guessed what was happening here at that moment. The Count said that since His Highness is here, their meeting can begin. The Prince ran up and hit the table with his hands. Does everyone gathered at this table really think that Grandma was just using him? The Emperor said to His Highness. Even though he is a Prince, he must not forget about his manners. But the boy was indignant. Should he really just listen to their nonsense? Do they really think he's an idiot? Grad said it would be rude to call it bullshit. And based on reliable information, they have every right to suspect her. The boy said that his grandmother sent him a letter because she missed him very much. But the problem was that it was because of this letter that the boy returned to the palace. So the second prince began to grind his teeth in anger, and the mountain continued that the Empress Dowager definitely had ulterior motives for. The second prince quickly interrupted the count. He asked the emperor whether he would really allow her to be slandered so easily. The count drew attention to the emperor's behavior. The emperor sat and was silent. If so, it seems his majesty also agrees. At that moment, the princess jumped up from her father's arms. She asked to wait. There seems to be a slight misunderstanding, so she needs to tell her something. And the girl told the gentleman that the grandmother did not write the letter that he now holds in his hands. She said she did it. The game was very surprised. The princess said that the words of appeal and the fact that she really misses her grandson were written by her grandmother. I wrote that he could come back to the palace. And also the fact that grandma is very lonely without him. Everyone present was dumbfounded. Highness recited the letter word and especially the part that she called her own, where the handwriting became crooked. The Count did not believe these words. This simply cannot be. So that this young lady could write something like that. This must be part of some plan. The Count shouted that this could not be true. He questioned how such a young lady could finish writing the Empress Dowager's letter. How can such a little girl write like that? One of the Count's assumptions was that the Princess most likely saw the contents of the letter in advance. The Princess knew that they would not believe her. It was a little troublesome, but apparently she had no other choice. She just needs to show what she can do now. The princess slowly approached the count. She picked up a pen and a piece of paper. The count was simply surprised. Her highness writes, and the girl wrote, If he is not busy, why not come back to the palace? That she is very lonely without him. And the girl looked at everyone with satisfaction. She asked if they would take it for her. After all, she actually finished writing that ill-fated letter. Everyone admired her highness. She was absolutely amazing. And the fact that she knows how to write is simply amazing. Perhaps she will be a genius. Count Bile shuddered. The Emperor said that in all likelihood the Count had nothing more to say. The Emperor looked carefully at his daughter again. Who would have thought that she would act like this? No one even suspected that it was she who wrote this letter. I, a girl, approached my father and asked him to take her with him to the meeting. She knew how to save her brother. Now it's clear why she wanted to go with her father. Thanks to her, the Emperor saw something interesting. 
At this time, the emperor turned to Lainey's. He asked if he wanted to add anything. Well, the boy just opened his mouth in surprise. Let's move away a little. He said that he had nothing to add. The father frowned. He had nothing to say, even if they were all here because of some simple misunderstanding. Then he is still too young and timid to put an end to it. But it's a long time to override my son's calculations, and the emperor turned to Count Bayer. He said that according to the Minister of Finance, he had appropriated a large number of things that were supposed to be delivered to the imperial family from a trading group controlled by the duchy. I was simply shocked. He did not understand how the emperor knew about this. He was ready to explain everything. It was very funny for everyone to watch. Only the count tried to shield himself. People began to converge on the office and communicate with each other. Someone said that Her Highness is very nice. It seems that now either the majesty favors her. The door quickly clicked shut. Everyone saw Her Highness leaving the office. There were a lot of people outside. The girl did not understand why so many guests had gathered here. When the girl came out and was simply surrounded by curious people, the girl stood very surprised. Gifts were thrown at her from all sides. Each one asked to accept his gift. The girl thanked everyone but did not understand what it all meant. The cook said that these were cookies that they baked themselves. This is a bag of chocolate. As soon as she takes a bite, she will immediately taste the strawberry jam. They considered Her Highness a great cutie. The girl thanked everyone. She was sure that everything would be very tasty. Suddenly a man approached her. He said that Her Highness is becoming more and more charming every day. Princess Elaine immediately recognized this man as the Minister of Intelligence, and she greeted him cheerfully. He immediately drew attention to the princess's feet. He saw that she was wearing the shoes that he gave her. It was a great honor for him. The girl said that she really liked the boots. The boots were very beautiful. The Minister of Intelligence said that he was happy to talk with her again, but unfortunately they still have a lot of work to do. The girl said that they would definitely talk next time. People slowly moved away from the princess, and they were very sad to say goodbye to her. The princess stood and looked at these people, very nice, kind, and caring. At that moment, the girl heard the prince calling her. He always called her little one. The girl did not expect that the second prince was still here. Didn't he leave? But the boy stood a few steps away and the girls looked at her carefully. The princess stood and looked at him carefully, but he was silent. The strange thing was that he called the girl over and said nothing to them. The second prince thanked the princess for clearing up this misunderstanding. She said that she sent this to her grandmother in a letter, and he thanked her again for this. After all, knowing her identity, she would not have sent him herself. And so he had very good meetings with his grandmother. After all, he also missed her very much. And the boy quickly bowed before the princess. The princess's face was surprised at first, and then she smiled cheerfully. Princess Elaine said that she certainly helped her. After all, they are all family, and in a family everyone should be for each other. The prince looked at the girl in surprise. He asked again if they were family. Princess Elaine confidently said that they are now a big family. The second prince said that she was right. He also said welcome to their family, and the children laughed merrily.